Hey everyone, it's me again, Saroosh. American English File, Second Edition, Book 2, Part 2B. The story behind the photo. Okay, let's get it started. Now, everybody first, look at this picture. What do you see? Yes, it's a very famous picture. Read the description. Mm -hmm. This image of workers taking a daredevil's lunch break at the top of a skyscraper certainly makes the viewer dizzy, like this. But it also brings their attention to the very risky life of the workers building the Rockefeller Center lead. In the first half of the 20th century, dozens of workers died after fatal falls during the construction of various skyscrapers. That's a hard life of a worker. So, what is the story behind this photograph? It shows the hard life of the workers building the skyscrapers in the first half of the 20th century. Now, I have some questions for you. Can you think of other popular photos with a story? A photo with a story behind it. Do you like photography? What type of photos do you like? How often do you take selfies? Huh? And do you share photos or videos on social media? Like Instagram, like YouTube, like Facebook, Twitter. All right. Answer these questions. Now, I want you to speak to your partner. I want you to compare your answers. Well done. Now, that was a very good discussion. We have another photo with a backstory. Now, look at the photo that news photographer Tom Hilston took in 2008. What do you think is happening? Look at the photo. What do you think is happening? There's an uh, American flag or pictures of Obama and people are watching the TV screens. What do you think is happening? Okay. Now, read Tom's description of what happened on the night he took the photo. Were you right? Okay, let's read it. A moment in history. On November 4th, I arrived in Chicago late in the evening. I wanted to photograph Barack Obama and his family in the convention center. But when I got there, I discovered that I didn't have my press pass and I couldn't go inside. Interesting. I walked around the park outside the center. Although it was November, it was a warm night. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere was wonderful. When I took this photo, everybody was looking at the TV screens, waiting for the election results. Some people were quietly holding hands and smiling. Others were tense and nervous. They felt that it was their moment. Suddenly, I realized that this was a better place to be than inside. I was watching Obama's victory through the faces of all these people. African, Hispanic, Chinese, white. And about 11 o'clock, the results were announced. And everybody went crazy. People started laughing, shouting, and crying. But when Obama made his speech, they all became quiet and emotional. There was only one place to be on the planet that night. And I was there interesting so were you right this photograph is about the night of the election of barack obama the president of the united states okay nice now as i said people are looking at the screen in chicago to see if barack obama has won the elections on november 4th 2008 good now i want you to read it again and answer the questions okay your turn. I'm going to wait for you. Tick tock, tick tock. Good, you're back. So, why did Tom Pilston go to Chicago to photograph Obama and his family at the convention center? Good. Number two, why couldn't he take a photograph of Obama? He didn't have his press pass, so he couldn't go inside. Number three, what was the weather like? It was warm. Number four, where did he take his photo? In the park outside the convention center. Okay, number five, 
Where could the people see the election results on TV screens? Number six, was he sorry that he couldn't go inside the center? No. And number seven, what happened when the Obama won? What happened when he won the election? Everybody went crazy, shouting, crying, something emotional, right? And as we say, <laughs> sensational. Now, why do you think the photographer thought his photo was better than a photo of Obama himself? And do you agree? Okay, this is the discussion for you. Answer it and speak to your partner. Okay, now look at the highlighted verbs in an extract from the text. This is the extract. Do they describe actions that happened? A. After he took the photo. B. At the same time as he took the photo. Okay, let's read it first. When I took this photo, everybody was looking at the TV screens, waiting for the election results. Some people were quietly holding hands and smiling. Others were tense and nervous. Okay, so they describe actions that happened when? At the same time as he took the photo. Well done. Now, we're going to talk about past continuous. Something that happened in the past and continued, right? Okay, everybody first, I need you to just listen and practice, okay? 1.39 At 8.45 last Saturday, I was working in my office. I wasn't doing anything important. My friends were having breakfast. They weren't working. Was it raining when you got up? No, it wasn't. What were you doing at 11 o'clock last night? I was watching TV. Okay, everybody. So, that is past continuous. So, look at the structure. I, he, she, it was working. You, we, they were working. The negative. I, he, she, it wasn't working. You, we, they weren't working. Okay, now question and yes, no answers. You flip it. Was he working? Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Were they working? Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Okay, so you use the past continuous to describe an action in progress at a specific time in the past. For example, I was running to school yesterday when I saw him. An action in progress that was happening in the past. It started in the past, continued, finished in the past. Okay, well done. Now, again, we often use past continuous to describe the situation at the beginning of a story or a narrative. For example, I was going to school, suddenly I saw an accident. Right? So, simple past or past continuous. Again, Listen and practice. 1.40 I was working in my office when the boss walked in. I was having lunch when my sister arrived. Okay, now so, I was working in my office, an action in progress when in the past, right? When, my, when the boss walked in. I was having lunch when my sister arrived. An action in progress happening in the past. It started in the past, in progress in the past, when something else happened. That is past continuous. Now, use the simple past for a completed action. For example, I came home last night. So, finish the action. Finished. Use past continuous for an action in progress before or at the time of the simple past action. Right? Okay. Now, in order to understand better, let's practice it together. All right? Okay. We have two exercises. Complete the sentences with a verb in the past continuous. All right? And B, put the verbs into the simple past or past continuous. Okay. Stop the video and do it, my friend. Very good. Check your answers with your partner. 
Okay, let's do it together. I was eating dinner, an action in progress, so I didn't answer the phone. Number one, I took this photo when my wife was working in the yard. So an action in progress when in the past and an action, another action happened. Okay, very good. Number two, he met his wife when he was living in Japan. They weren't waiting for us when we arrived. Question. Was she wearing a coat when she went out? Number five. The sun was shining when I left for work. Number six. What were you doing at 7.30 last night? Number seven. I wasn't listening when you gave the instruction. Number eight. We weren't watching TV when you called. Okay, so that's past continuous. Now, in the next exercise, which one? Simple past or past continuous? Okay. She arrived when we were having dinner. That's the sample. Number one. I broke my arm when I was playing soccer. Very good. Number two. Were you driving fast when the police stopped you? Number three, it was snowing when we left the restaurant. Number four, I didn't see the game because I was working. Number five, when you called me, I was talking to my boss. Number six, we were studying in the library when we met. And number seven, were they living in Tokyo when they had their first baby? Well done, you did very good. So that is the difference between simple past and past continuous. Let's move on. Okay, time to test your skills in pairs, you and your friend. Listen to the sounds and make a sentence using the past continuous and the simple past. Okay? 1.41 1. One. Okay, so they were playing tennis when it started to rain. Listen to the sounds and use your imagination. Okay, let's go. Two. Three. This is the police. Four. Five. Oh, hi. Hello. Okay. Now, the answers may differ, but use your imagination. Well done. Now, everybody, at, in, on. Okay. Complete this little exercise with your friend. Which preposition do you use before a date? For example, November 4th, what do you use for time, for the, the morning, the afternoon, a room or building? Okay, so on November 4th, at 11 o'clock time, in the morning, in the afternoon, in a room or in a building, in a convention center. Okay, okay, very good. Now. Which prepositions do you use with a month, January, the weekend, home, work, school? Let's try it. Month, January, in January. Weekend, on the weekend, always. Home, work, school, at. At school, at work. I'm at work. I'm at home. All right? 
Very good. Good. Nice start. But this is the real deal. At, in, on. Complete the chart with at, in, or on. One, two, three. Easy. Do it. Okay. Now I need you to listen and check. 1.42 At In On 1 In In Peru In Lima In the kitchen In a store In a museum In a park In a yard In a car In February In June In winter in 2011, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Two, on. On a bike, on a bus, on a train, on a plane, on a ship, on the floor, on a table, on a shelf, on the balcony, on the roof, on the wall. On March 1st, on Tuesday, on New Year's Day, on Valentine's Day, on the weekend. 3. At At school, at home, at work, at college, at the airport, at the train station, at a bus stop, at a party, at the door. At 6 o'clock, at 2.30, at 7.45, at night, at midnight, at lunch. Okay, so these are the answers in, on, and at. Now, test your partner. Look at this chart. Say a place or time word. For example, Lima. Your partner says your partner in Lima. Tuesday, on Tuesday. The complete form. Test your partner and then switch. It's on you. Okay, time to have some fun. All right, ask these questions from your partner. Look at the pictures. For example, when were you born? Where do you usually have breakfast? What time do you usually have lunch? What days of the week do you usually go out in the evening? What time of day do you usually do your English homework? When do you usually take a vacation? Where do you usually listen to music? And number eight, when's your birthday? Now, answer these questions and compare your answers with your friend. All right? Okay, so far so good. Now, I need you to just listen and repeat. 1.43 Where were you at six o'clock in the evening? I was at work. What were you doing? I was having a meeting with the boss. Okay, very well. Now, in pairs, take turns answering the questions about yesterday, just like the conversation. For example, 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Where were you at 6.30 in the morning? I was at home. What were you doing? I was having breakfast, for example. Make conversations with your partner. Speak with your partner. Take roles. All right? Well done. Okay. Now, everybody, please look at this picture. What do you see? Okay. This is a famous photo that was on a cover of many magazines around the world in the 1960s. Where do you think the people are? What do you think is happening? Do you have any idea? Okay. So... Read the beginning of a newspaper article. Why do you think it is called the image that cost a fortune? Do you have any idea? Okay, let's read it together. The image that cost a fortune. Caroline de Bendam was born in 1940. She was the granddaughter of Count Maurice de Bendam, a rich aristocrat who owned a lot of property in Paris. Paris and Monaco, although he had other grandchildren, the Count decided to leave all his money to Caroline. I never knew why, says Caroline. Perhaps because I was pretty, 
he paid for her to go to very expensive schools in England and he hoped that she would marry well, perhaps a member of the European royal family. But Caroline or Caroline was a rebel. She went to New York and worked there for a short time as a model. Nice. Then in 1968, when she was 28 years old, she returned to Paris. And after that, we don't know what happened. So do you have any idea, everybody? Okay. So let's see what is the story about. Okay. We're going to listen to this woman and check our guess. Check if we were right. 1.44 en mai 1968, je suis rentrée à Paris. In May 1968, I came back to Paris. It was a very exciting time. There were a lot of demonstrations and fighting between students and the police. I wasn't really interested in politics. I wasn't a communist or an anarchist, but I loved the atmosphere. All the students were fighting for freedom, for revolution, and the French police were everywhere. On May the 15th, I was with thousands of other young people. We were walking toward the Place de la Bastille. I was tired, so a friend picked me up and I sat on his shoulders. Another boy, who was walking next to us, was carrying a Vietnamese flag. It was the time of the Vietnam War. And he said to me, Hey, could you carry the flag for me? And I said, OK. There was so much happening that I didn't notice all the photographers. The next day, the photo was on the cover of magazines all over the world. When my grandfather saw it, he immediately ordered me to come to his house. He was furious, really, really angry. He said, that's it. You are a communist. I'm not going to leave you anything, not a penny. I walked out of the room, and I never saw him again. Six months later, he died, and I didn't get any money from him. Nothing. Oh, my God. No! So it is called the image that cost a fortune because the woman's grandfather saw the photo on the cover of a magazine and then decided not to leave her any money when he died. Denied. Okay, everybody, I want you to listen again and choose A, B, or C. Okay, let's do it. 1.44 En mai 1968, je suis rentré à Paris. In May 1968, I came back to Paris. It was a very exciting time. There were a lot of demonstrations and fighting between students and the police. I wasn't really interested in politics. I wasn't a communist or an anarchist, but I loved the atmosphere. All the students were fighting for freedom, for revolution, and the French police were everywhere. On May the 15th, I was with thousands of other young people. We were walking toward the Place de la Bastille. I was tired, so a friend picked me up and I sat on his shoulders. Another boy, who was walking next to us, was carrying a Vietnamese flag. It was the time of the Vietnam War. And he said to me, Hey, could you carry the flag for me? And I said, OK. There was so much happening that I didn't notice all the photographers. The next day, the photo was on the cover of magazines all over the world. When my grandfather saw it, he immediately ordered me to come to his house. He was furious, really, really angry. He said, that's it. You are a communist. I'm not going to leave you anything, not a penny. I walked out of the room, and I never saw him again. Six months later, he died, 
and I didn't get any money from him. Nothing. Talk about wrong place at the wrong time. Okay. Check your answers, everyone. In 1968, she wasn't interested in politics. Right. Number two, she loved the atmosphere because all the students were fighting for freedom. Number three, she was sitting on a friend's shoulder because she was tired. Number four, she was carrying the flag because somebody gave it to her. Hmm. Number five, her grandfather died six months later. Well done. You did very good. Now, do you think sh she's sorry that she was in that photo? I don't know. This is on you. What do you think? Talk to your partner, right? Now, everybody, we have a speaking practice. Talk to your partner. Give more information if you can. Do you have a photo you really like? Who took it? What was happening at that time? Do you upload photos to Facebook or other internet sites? What was the last photo you uploaded? Do you have a photo as a screensaver on your computer or phone? What is it? Number four. Do you have a favorite photo of yourself as a child? Who took it? What was happening when they took it? What were, they, what were you wearing? And number five. Do you have any photos in your bedroom or living room? What are they of? And number six. Do you know any other famous historical photos? Who or what are they of? This is on you. Speak to your friend. Okay, last set in the house. We have a writing exercise. My favorite photo. My favorite photo blog. Post your favorite photo on the website together with a short description of why the photo is important to you. This week's winner is Erica, a student in Denver, Colorado. Okay, first. Match the questions with the paragraphs 1 to 5. Okay, this is on you. Do it. Okay, so let's match the questions with the descriptions. Okay. Now the first one. What's your favorite photo? One of favorite photos is this one of me and my sister Chrissy. Okay, number two. Who took it? When? Where? My dad took the photo. Okay, all right. Number three. What was happening when you took the photo? We were at a place called Bryant Park. It was a very famous park. Okay, number four. Why do you like it? I love this photo because it's happy. It reminds me of a great day in the city. And number five. Where do you keep it? I have a photo. I have the photo, a frame on my computer, something like that. That's the, that's the question. Okay, now. Good. So we have the questions now. Time to complete the text with in, of, on, or around. Take your time and do it. Okay. Let me help you. All right. My dad took the photo in the spring of 2011 when we were on vacation with our family in New York City. Okay. We were at a place called Bryant Park. It's a pretty famous park behind the New York City Public Library in Midtown Manhattan. We were standing in front of the Josephine Shaw Memorial Fountain, throwing coins in the water and making wishes. My dad was telling us all about the history of the fountain. It was the first fountain in New York City dedicated to a woman. To a woman. When my dad took the photo, my sister and I were just jumping and running around the fountain being silly. And number five. I have the photo in a frame and on my computer with other photos of New York City. Okay, now you're going to write about your favorite photo. Answer the questions in A in the right order. Okay, these questions. Good. Make sure to check your description for mistakes, grammar, punctuation, spelling. Attach a copy of a photo if you can. Show your description to another student. Is the photo similar in any way to yours? Okay, now you can keep a photo in an album, in your wallet, in your bedroom, in a frame, on the wall, on a table, on your phone, on your computer, or by your bed. Okay, make sure to do this writing exercise and do it just like what I told you. Answer these questions in the order and check for grammar mistakes and show it to your partner. And that was it for today. 
And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Well done everybody, that was a good session. But you can always be better, it's never enough. Be serious about it, be about it, see you.